when you're busking, you're selling something that most people don't even realize they want, you know? No one is walking into the BART station or exiting the BART station thinking, oh, I hope someone's there to sing me a song. <laughs> and basically what we're doing is we're sharing our love of music or art with the community. And it's up to the community to decide whether they want to have that or not. But we're not the cause of problems. We're entertaining. We're not making no problems. We're making things happen. I'm no player. I'm no pimp. I'm no hustler. I am working. It's in my blood and my bones. It comes from my family. My, my whole family's musicians. Music is universal, international. It goes all over the world because it, it, it heals people, it makes people happy. And I'm not going to do nothing else but play my music. I'm the original bucket. Man. The human race oftentimes overlooks talent and takes someone for granted. It's a sad situation, but that's the reality. Sometimes these people, they perform, they create, and unfortunately, most of them will be forgotten. Well, I'm somebody. I'm not like the rest of these cats that can you spread for change. No. I earn everything I do and I give it back. I started on buckets before I got my drum set. You don't forget your roots. I play for two hours straight. I have to, it's, it's in my blood. You know, I will play two hours straight. You know, but then someone taking advantage of this music on the street. If you look at that dollar sign, which you know what I'm talking about. It, it ain't worth it. You broke in 20 minutes and you're right back where you were before. You get your money. Bye. Yeah, I need money too, but I don't I, I don't have to get it if I don't get it. If I didn't earn it, I don't get it. I love it. I enjoy it. It makes me happy. It keeps me out of trouble. They came up saying, we gotta give you a ticket. But well, I said, we already finished. You're disturbing the peace. Disturbing the peace. There's no noise, we know that. But they called us and we gotta do what we gotta do. But I found myself in handcuffs and in the back of a police car for a half hour. I had my equipment confiscated, actually. I gotta go to court May the 5th, 
My landlord owes $3,400. It's a long struggle, man, believe me. San Francisco has a very rich history of busking. Until 2007, there wasn't really a permit system in place for street performers to legally perform. After five years of fighting for this system, they finally succeeded in passing the Fisherman's Wharf permit system. The port property is, is considered a little bit different than even though it belongs to the city and county of San Francisco, we operate under the port code, which is a, a different set of rules that allows us to manage the waterfront. For the most part, what the program does is allow uh, street performers, which are musicians, acrobats, jugglers, magicians, to ply their craft on port property without the police hassling them. There are rules, and as long as they're within those rules, then they're allowed to perform. Today, which is meeting day, musicians meeting day, this is the day that we get to pick for the following month. Each name of the person, the musician, or artist, or magician, or whatever it might be, their name gets called, and we pick a spot, and then we just keep doing that until we fill up the week. And each week takes about two hours, you know, so, so you gotta have your Wheaties, <laughs> you know, so to speak. Or get some good sleep. Friday, the uh, spot 2F from 4 to 10. This is really cool to be in this kind of program because it's guaranteed that you have somewhere to play. The money's not guaranteed. Then again, like I said, this is what you make out of it. You know, you gotta you know, you go out there. We all know that it's the street, man, you know, and, it is, and it's all about tips. Les has become also sort of a standard for what we, you know, like to see. He's, he's, he's a little loud sometimes, you know. There's, there's some people who say he's too loud. But um, he just, he's such an ambassador for the war. He really is. To be quite honest, nobody follows the noise order that exists down here. Nobody. But then you have the musician that has five different speakers and blaring them all at once, and you're like, you can't do anything about it, you know? You have your own spot and your own time. That's the greatest thing about this program, and that's probably why this program exists. But outside of that district, San Francisco is kind of an open battlefield. It's all out on the old railroad, all out on the sea, all out on the old railroad, far as I can see. We can turn you to the living We can turn you to the living I gotta admit that I sort of like the Wild West aspect of the BART station, you know, that anything can happen at any time feeling. Every time someone gives me, you know, money for just standing there and singing, it's, it feels like a miracle to me. I don't do it just for the money, but at the same time I make a living doing it, so I have to be conscious of that. But at some point, you just realize, yeah, I've been standing here for two hours and I've made eight dollars. And this is brutal. <laughs> this is brutal. No matter what, I mean, there's still going to be times when it's really hard and where I'm thinking to myself, this is supernatural. I mean, I get people coming by sometimes who look at me like they just have no idea what I'm doing. But as long as I'm out there and I'm honestly doing the best I can and singing as sincerely as I can, ultimately there will be people who respond to it. And that's an amazing feeling, you know. It can make a lot of difference to people. I know it because they, t they tell me all the time, you know. People have pointed out that I transformed the station for them and it made, made it a place that they wanted to walk through. I always try to be as friendly as possible to any other buskers. We all have our own methods, everybody's got their own opinion on how long you should play in a spot and all that. But there are times when you will encounter someone who just 
doesn't have a grasp on common courtesy or common sense. So, you know, you can be playing in a spot and then have a person come and set up way too close to you. Oh, he's just going to go and set up and play right over there when I'm already playing here and complete, completely disrespect me. When you've got two buskers playing too close to each other, it's just noise to the passers-by, and you're just an annoyance, you know? I have, I have managed to find some community, um, you know, with people like Sammy. And when I'm having a really bad day, I can text Sammy and complain to him about how bad of a day. And then he can be like, oh, bro, that's so, that's so bad. I feel for you, you know? Jonah and I are more like uh, compatriots. We think a lot alike about a lot of different things. We observe things kind of similarly. Jonah does very well. Yeah, Jonah does very well. Um, but he has his rough days too. Even if signs at first point to it being a bad day, I still try to give the day the benefit of the doubt, you know? One of my worst days recently, I made $49 in five and a half hours. And one of my best days recently, in the BART anyway, I made $125 in the same amount of time. San Francisco for 20 years. I have been on the road in 20 years, so I'm dying to go. I'm ready to go fly. I'm going 